and we're looking at the checklist. Uh, we're looking at the checklist for uh, for the team for um, uh, you know, leading a team. What are some things that we need to remember and to you know, remember to put in place um, for good functioning of a team, right? Okay, so we looked at um, two, uh, three things. Okay, um, let me just share the screen. Right. So we looked at uh, three things. We looked at uh, the big picture that everyone should know it, uh, the placement that the right person is doing the right thing, right job, uh, right task, and uh, thirdly, the attitude. Okay, so uh, we cannot overlook uh, attitude, um, and that's going to if we if the tendency is normally to uh, you know compare skill and attitude. Skill is something that is very, very visible. Attitude initially may not be. Uh, it could be hidden, and only when the person begins to do certain things, then you realize the attitude, and then you know they realize, oh, it's too, too late. So, um, so we realize the importance. Um, I mean, we stated the importance of attitude, right? And an attitude is also contagious. Uh, if it's a good attitude, uh, then the whole team gets it. It's it spreads. Uh, it's contagious, and so that's a good thing, right? So everyone has a good attitude. Everyone has, um, you know, whatever this um, um, it's spreading, right? But uh, the flip side of that is also true in the sense that if it is a if it is a bad attitude, then that can that is also contagious. You know, the person can spread that as well. Okay. And, it's, and especially if it's a person with um, you know great skill levels, if it's a person who's very influential in the team, right? So um, that can also spread. So you need to be careful. Okay. Um, then uh, a few other things to look at is the price. Okay. So what is the price in the sense? We know that every project or every task or activity that the team undertakes. Okay. Now it requires effort. It requires a certain number of certain uh, amount of maybe sacrifice uh, in the, on the part of the individuals in the team in order to you know get something done or reach a particular place. Okay. Um, well, team needs to be committed, which means that they are saying no to a lot of other things and saying yes to this particular thing. Now it could be a time-bound, short span of time. Where they are, where the sacrifice is required, where uh, they're saying no to a lot of other things, and then you know, uh, coming to this and getting this done. So, whatever it is, the team needs to know the price. The team needs to know that it is going to take this effort. It's going to take this kind of sacrifice and commitment in order to get the job done. Right. Um, well, Paul stated very plainly to Timothy, and uh, he said, "You know, this is this is what it'll it'll take." You know, he said, "Fight, um, do the work of an evangelist." He um, he he tells Timothy um, about about his own life and all the things that he went through, um, and uh, and especially in, in, to the in the Corinthian church and the letter to the. Uh, in the epi second episode to the Corinthians, he, he talks about all the things that he had to go through. Right? He did not hold back. He said, you know, it, which means that the, the, the people learned that, yes, he went through these persecutions, he went through these afflictions, which was actually, uh, uh, you know, the price of price that he had to pay in order to in order to minister to the churches around, right? Minister to in the unreached areas, minister to the church, and so on. So he he was very very uh, you know plain about it. Uh, in fact, in Second Timothy chapter three and verse ten, uh, in writing to Timothy, he says, "But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions." which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yes, 
and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12. So he's plainly telling Timothy, you know, I went through this. And uh, in other words, if you all who live godly will suffer persecution. So, you know, the context is living for Christ and uh, doing the work of the kingdom. And well, the uh, the reality of persecution. Now, well, you know, that is one thing. But if it is, uh, you know, if it's, it need not be as, you know, severe as that, uh, where Paul's persecution was, you know, uh, to be jailed and to be uh, put in prison and you know all the things that he endured um, but it can be something else the price can be something else right um, and for simple tasks that the team has to do together you know because of the you know what they are involved in there is a price to be paid and it requires commitment it requires sacrifice right so so is the team member aware of the cost? Okay, again, taking an example from, you know, from the worship team and how uh, we, uh, you know, the audition happens, and um, so we 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 found out that you know uh, it's all you know trial and error. We found out that okay, the people are very enthusiastic in wanting to sign up, in wanting to, uh, in wanting to uh, minister in the worship team. Right, uh, people are very, very excited. That's because they see what happens on a Sunday morning, right? So most most people are not part of the practice. They are not part of what happens during the week. They are, they are, they are only exposed. Exposure to the team is what happens on a Sunday morning when the team is ministering on stage. So, um, well, they are very excited and they're saying, "Okay, I want to serve God in this manner." You know, it's all it's all good. But then we realize that they, the most people, or you know, ninety nine percent of the people do not know uh, what happens during the week, right? In preparation uh, and what what it requires uh, for the person. Uh, maybe the understanding is okay. I come on a Sunday morning and I, and I I get to do this, right? If I sign up, maybe I have the skill, ability, heart, everything, and then I come on a Sunday morning, and I do this, right? So so then we decided, okay, hey, people need to have people need to know the cost, and right? people need to know the price, the reality of it. Well, we have different people auditioning. Maybe there's a you know there's a young mother bringing up two kids. And this is the quantum of time that's available for her, right? During the week. Well, Sunday maybe she's coming with the family, and you know, but during the week, this is what is available, and this is what in this season of her life. So, so we need to spell that out so that she can make a choice. Saying that being part of the team, well, it requires this. It requires a practice, uh, which is outside of our Sunday morning thing. It's on a weekday, maybe on a Friday or a Saturday. And uh, it's at this place. So if you're if you're you know staying somewhere far away, and it requires a one-hour commute to come to the place, and maybe a two hours of rehearsal, and then again a one-hour commute to go back. So that's like four hours of your time. Um, so would you be able to do that on a weekday, on on, a, on any given week that you're rostered? Know that you're scheduled to be there on a Sunday morning. So, um, so apart from that, this is what happens on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning service starts at whatever time, but you are expected to be there much earlier. So, given your, you know, your season in life and whatever the else that you're doing, can you leave your house at six thirty a.m. Come for a ten thirty, you know, to be ready there for a you know, service and be there for two services. Or if you are serving in one other, some other place, you know, well, the service starts at eight, but can you be there at seven? Which means you, from your house, you might have to leave at six or six thirty a.m. Can you do that? Right. So that is required. So the the so the cost or the price uh, of uh, is spelt out. Right, so everybody's aware. Yes, you know this is what 
is required. And everybody is able to maybe make certain changes, mentally be prepared, reprioritize things. You know, for some it could be only that particular week, right? Taking the example of the worship team, it's it's that Sunday in a month, or maybe two Sundays in a month that I need to do this. Uh, well, for some it could be more, so we can make plan things around that, right? And uh, and maybe if you if somebody's working in a team and working towards a deadline, maybe a software release, maybe a song release. You know, we know that it's not going to be like this for you know every day, but it's definitely <clears throat> this particular month. And uh, you know, this is what we're working towards. You know, so maybe fifteenth of May is what we're working towards. So till then, it's going to be intense. So you're prepared. Uh, and as a team member, you know that this is this is expected of you, and it's going to take so much of time. It's going to take so much of effort. So everybody needs to know the the, the cost. Well, that is knowing it is just part of it. The second part of it is that they need to be willing. Okay. So when it comes to the you know the auditions and everything, so um, so we we decided okay we need to tell the people up front can't just surprise them now that you're in the team this is what is required no even before you are you know you become part of this team um you might be considering being part of this team but this is what is required you know can you so we're just telling you know, if you're signing up if you get in this is what is required are you willing are you okay with this right so it gives the people an opportunity to say yes it gives the people an opportunity to say no Right. Uh, but the important thing is that everybody needs to be willing. Everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to be willing to actually pay the price. Okay. Okay. Then the other thing is the the next thing in the checklist is this core meaning. Where are we going? Okay. Where are we going? You know, it's, it's like how you have a scoreboard. Uh, whether it's a whether it's a football match or a cricket match or any other game. You have a scoreboard. So the scoreboard tells you, uh, you know, if you typically if you look at a scoreboard, it tells you the progress of the game, right? It shows um, if it's a football match, it shows okay, this is the first half, which is forty-five minutes, and uh, so many, so much of time has elapsed. Okay, we've already twenty-five minutes have gone by. We have twenty more minutes in the first half of the game, and this is the score. One zero, okay. Team A one, Team B zero, okay. So Team B knows that in the twenty minutes left of the first half, they better do something to equalize, to you know gain an upper hand. They better up their game. They better strategize and do what is required. So, so it's the score. So the scoreboard is something that gives you. It's a picture that gives you a progress of the game. Right. So, so everybody in the team needs to know what the score is. Okay. In other words, everybody needs to know with regard to whatever they are involved in, the task that they're doing. They need to know uh, this is where we are. This is where we have progressed, and this is what is required of us. You know, I used to work in sales, and um, and it was a it was a monthly target, you know. And, uh, well, I used to work in an organization, uh, you know, one of the earlier companies also. Uh, it had a monthly target, but then it was broken down into daily targets, right? So, uh, daily uh, thing. It was very very high pressure, right? So morning, uh, you'll be asked, okay, do you know what the score is? Which is the end of the month. What you need to do, where you are today. What you need to do. And where you are, okay. And then at the end of the day, again the same thing, you know. The, the, in the in the debriefing, it's okay. Today, uh, this is what you have achieved, and which means that daily, with regard to your daily target, this is what you have done. With regard to your monthly target, this is what you have done, and this is where this is how much you need to do, okay. Um, and uh, so, this was done on a daily daily basis it was very intense but it really helped the individual in the team to uh, to really pull up if they needed to 
if, if they needed to. Um, so the so questions are like, you know, where are we today? Where do we need to reach? Where do we need to go? What should we do in order to reach where we actually need to be by the by the end of this month, by the end of this week, whatever, right? So it was a very clear. It gives clarity to every member in the team. So when there's a team meeting, you know, it gives clarity. Well, not all tasks are quantifiable like this, right? Um, but we can have our own. Uh, you know, based on the nature of the task, we can say, okay, this is our goal, right? This is our goal, and uh, this is where we, we where we are in respect, uh, in you know, regarding the goal, and this is where we need to be. Okay, so that can be a very simple three-point or a three-question, um, you know, score scoreboard, right? Now this helps the team. This gives clarity. Um, so everybody, um, so when there is a clarity in where we, what we need to, where we need to go, then the actions also are clearer, right? So, which means that okay, uh, today uh, if I'm planning to just relax and take the day off and, and all that, and then tomorrow is what you know where I need to finish the thing, then I better change things. I better take my day off the day after after I've finished it because something is expected of me. Uh, and this work is due um, to be finished tomorrow. And so we make all those changes, changes in effort, changes in you know priority and all those things um, we're able to do. Right? So the team member needs to do this. So it's, uh, well, it would be the role of the team leader, you know, to communicate this, okay, um, and this would this would really help. Okay, um, another the, the last thing in the checklist is the connect, meaning is there communication within the team? Is there communication within the members of the team? Is there proper communication channels of communication uh, from the team leader to the team? Okay, um, so when we say communication, it's two way, right? So, um, so communication increases connection. Okay, so if there is no communication, like between members of the team who are working towards a certain certain goal, um, they're not talking to each other. They are maybe you know there's been some conflict, and because of which they're saying, okay, why should I tell? Why should I tell him? Why should I tell her? Right. Um, I'll just do my thing. I'll just do my task. Uh, maybe the output of your task uh, is required for that person, for the other member in the team, in order to do their job. Right. But then saying, why should I tell? Why should I do that? And uh, withholding information and not really communicating, not sharing. Now that's going to uh, create a breakdown in communication, and that this breakdown in communication is going to result in breakdown in connection. Okay, when there's a breakdown in connection, then well, there's a breakdown in uh, whatever the team is, uh, you know, trying to achieve. Okay, uh, just think about it. You know, you take a simple game, uh, for example, uh, um, and uh, well. The, the the strategy of is, is not really spelt out by the by the captain to the members of the team right and let's say if it's not spelt out if it's uh, uh, you know saying okay they need to do their job and uh, but then you don't really spell out uh, okay this is what we are this is what our strategy is then uh, then they don't first of all they don't understand okay they don't understand what we need to do they just go about doing their thing right and uh, to add to that if let's say you know any others in the team are like why should i why should i share this why should i tell this okay or i'm i'm going to uh, well let's say in a game of cricket and then uh, field placement right well the bowler needs to uh, bowler is also involved in the process of saying, okay, this is how I'm going to bowl. Therefore, the batsman is more likely to hit the ball this way 
and maybe onto the on side or the leg side or the off side. So the field placement is going to depend on that. Right. So the captain says, okay, you know, you, this is how I place the field. So you bowl this way. Well, the bowler says, who's he to tell me? Right. Who's he to tell me? And I'm going to bowl the other way. Right. Then, you know, I know we've placed the field this way, but I'm going to bowl the other way anyway. Right. When that happens, and you don't communicate that to the captain and the, and the field placement is in a certain, certain way, then you know that you know that uh, opportunity to get the batsman out is lost. And then the batsman actually, batsman actually is in an advantage to score. Okay. So anyway, that's cricket. But um, if, it's, if it's not cricket, you know, it's like any other task where there's a breakdown in communication, um, then there is a breakdown in connection. You just remember that, uh, right? So, um, um, breakdown. Uh, so, so the flip side, the positive side of it is: there's when there is communication, when there is the flow of communication, either from the team leader to the team members, or within the team, when there's easy flow of communication, then you know it increases connection. So the one of the outcomes of increased connection or you know interaction is that one understands. There's an understanding of the person. Right? There's an understanding of the person. Why is that person maybe able to do it or unable to do it? Okay. So when you understand, when there's an increased understanding, then it also increases the effectiveness. There is a, there is, it lowers the chance for misunderstanding. Okay. Well, somebody, somebody is not able to do the particular thing. Well, if you understand that that person has also maybe communicated and saying that oh, these are some challenges and there's a delay, but I will do it. When you understand it, then you know, then it increases the effectiveness right, of the team. So when you you've understand, you've understood the person, you've understood the the reasons maybe why there could be a delay, then then we also, you also, the team members adjust to it rather than pulling that person down or pointing fingers and blaming the person. Team also understands, okay, this is the challenge. So therefore, you know, we we know that this person will come around and do it. It's delayed by a day, but you know, we'll go ahead and do our job. Right. He's already communicated that. So there's a communication of even support and encouragement, right? Um, where in the place of blaming and, uh, you know, discouragement, right? So uh, communication to be clear, concise, courteous, and consistent. Okay, communication to be clear. So um, that it's, um, it's not fuzzy, it's not uh, ambiguous. You know, so sometimes when you when you read a text or an email, you know, if you're left wondering, you know, it could be either this or it could be either that, right? Maybe some instruction. It could be this. It could be that. There's no clarity, right? There's no clarity about the, uh, you know, what what is this person communicating? What is this person saying, right? When if it's if it's um, then it require it, it it results in ambiguity and confusion. Whereas if it's clear, then and, uh, and concise, you know, when we say concise, it means that uh, you know, in terms of instructions, in terms of guidelines, to not be very very verbose and voluminous, but to be concise. Right? So uh, when it's concise, it's precise. There's no room for error, right? To be courteous, which means to be polite, to be respectful, right? So if it is uh, disrespectful, then you then we lose the respect for that person, right? Um, so it uh, unnecessary conflict uh, require uh, happens because of that. So, um, so yeah. Um, so it needs to be courteous and to be consistent. You know, where if it's uh, going to be, um, um, if it's going to be communication that's happening only at a maybe on on a certain time, 
and a certain day, and then the rest of the week, there is absolutely no communication. Right? And you're left wondering, what is it happening? Okay, so that communication has to be consistent. Okay. Um, so, it, it, which means that it, 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 you know, you need to give that space for the person to carry out the task. It can't, it can't, you can't bombard, you know, the team or team member. It depends. What is the communication about, right? Um, so, it, it need not be micromanaging. It need not be, you know, always asking questions. You know, all status reports. Um, it need not be that. But it can be consistent in the sense uh, it can be at a certain time on a certain day, and uh, with the understanding that this is uh, this is how the flow of communication is going to be. So then that gives the space for the team, and also you know uh, it it uh, um, it reduces minimizes the chance for uh, misunderstanding and lack of clarity and so on. Okay. So communication is very important. Maybe it's uh, it's for a call, calling the team for a team meeting, is scheduling something with the team, uh, is uh, uh, sending you know uh, maybe you uh, need to be uh, the team needs to be at a certain place uh, to carry out a certain tasks, uh, task and so on. So uh, the communication you know we cannot. We cannot really emphasize the importance of good communication, right? So communication increases connection, which leads to better understanding. It could be understanding of the people. It could be understanding of the tasks, um, which also results in effectiveness, greater uh, effectiveness in carrying out the tasks. Okay, so let's um, now let's take some time. Maybe uh, you know if you have any questions, if you have anything to share on this, on this checklist, uh, or you know generally about uh, uh, team, the team itself. Um, maybe you can talk about this. Any questions before we go on to the next one? Maybe you can share your experience, good, bad, and ugly, working with teams. Or maybe you were part of a team, and uh, maybe the, certain, the learnings can be, OK, how not to do it? No, that's a learning also, right? So yeah, so you can, I think it'd be good if you can share one or two experiences. That will also be, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. One um, lesson, and um, okay. So this during one of our um, uh, outreaches, um, singing as a team in, um, at, I think it was in uh, one apartment complex when we went um, Christmas carol outreach. So the set was supposed to be uh, led by um, another person. I was supposed to be a backup singer and uh, plays guitar. Um, but uh, the scenario was a little uh, interesting in since people were very enthusiastic. You know, they, they were they wanted to dance and they wanted to move around. Mm -hmm. And I felt the leader was uh, not in that <laughs> much of an energy level. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, for a moment, I thought that I think I should step in, and I stepped in. But I then later realized that I was overstepping. Uh, uh -huh. then, I, then I spoke to the leader again, uh, saying that, uh, sorry, I, 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 did, I, I, I was not supposed to do this. Um, and always uh, to give the leader that uh, freedom to lead the team. I, I learned it that on that. Mm -hmm. OK, OK, yeah. So once that, yeah, um, someone else, um, yeah, Lubega, please go ahead. Thanks, uh, thanks, John, for sharing that. Uh, first, uh, I have been a leader in school, head teachership, and principalship, being a principal for like 15 years now. But uh, some of the things that are very hard in leadership is for management, which is 
you can you see a house can have a budget or a building can have a budget and once you have the money it's over but uh, when it comes to people management it is literally very 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 hard but um, some of the insights that have developed along the years it all starts with recruitment who you bring to the team mm. usually much as qualification is very important but um, i value character i value the heart of the person i value those unseen things that can't be written on the paper in a person mm-hmm. if i look on his qualification mm-hmm. right but two when they come onto the team we usually do vigorous training before they join vigorous right. training for, for them to really understand the mission the vision the goals the core values expectations of them and then another thing i think which is also very important uh, i'm just talking from my ex- real experience mm-hmm. is providing them with tools mm-hmm. what you what they need to use in order to do their work right and then provide them with time but another important thing is monitoring and supervision uh, i'm sorry um, can you repeat that please um, the last one and evaluation right right mm. because <laughs> even if somebody is so good somebody is so experienced mm. once you <laughs> you take usually eyes off them they usually do whatever they want Mm-hmm. and the, in my country here we have what we call performance contract but i know we copied it from that side mm-hmm. before, before the year begins or before a given session begins we should know what are their goals what are what are they going to achieve and you okay. see, we should always have what we call mid term mid term alignment coming back within the course of the the time right. to ask them where they are reaching i wouldn't mm-hmm. continue but let me stop there Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, very, very true. Uh, to resource the team, to make sure that uh, they know what they're doing, they make sure that they have the tools. Yes, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, anyone else? Um, any other? you know this there's, uh, there's nothing uh, you know uh, it, it's very um, well there's nothing so exciting as you know working with a team it's very enriching exciting to uh, when the team is you know functioning well it's doing well uh, there's a you know it brings a sense of uh, camaraderie and uh, um, and fellowship and you know uh, and your growing and uh, you know knowing each other in the team and it's it's it's, it's wonderful and everything is going well and uh, so um so one needs to really work towards that right so uh, so the next thing that we are going to look at is about um, you know building the team uh, which is uh, you know putting together a great team building a team now um, you know all everyone who is a leader maybe is someone who's uh, uh, leading an organization everybody understands that yes the it's the people who make the difference right um but it's the people who are you might have a um, you know uh, you might have a great product it, it might be a, a technological wonder it could be you know it could be an app it could be whatever you know a, a service that is being provided and so on it could be so but building the team is as important as um, building the product and that's what bob taylor says you know founder of taylor guitars uh, one of the uh, uh, oh, you have great many good guitars and uh, great guitars and and, and taylor uh, guitars handcrafted and, and so on so they make sure that um, the there's minimal or zero defect in each of the guitars that they put out and a high level of excellence and so on so um, so he says it's it's a lot goes into bringing out a great product like a taylor guitar but it uh, the team that 
that you build and the people who are actually behind uh, the product, you know, that is, um, they are as important as the product itself, right? Because they are the ones who actually make a difference and they are the ones who are bringing in the, the creativity, the ideas and, uh, and, and the actual work that is required, so on, right? So building the team, okay. So to build a great team, like what Lubega was saying um, just now, he's talking about, okay, um, we need to have the right people, you know, it's it's good to have a good process um, to to recruit, right? So we can do one of two things. You know, we can either recruit the right people, okay, to, in order to build a great team. And uh, well, sometimes we don't have that luxury, right? We have maybe the team was handed over to us, right? We didn't do the recruiting, but we came in to lead the team that was already there in place. Okay, so now maybe, you know, now we are, we are there to lead a team and we need to do the, the task of building this team. So what do we do? We develop the people who are already in the team, right? develop the team that we already have, develop the people in the team. Right? So we either recruit uh, the right people or we develop the people whom we already have, okay? So um, while building a team, well, we need to focus on each and every member of the team and each and every person who's there to, uh, to build them up. Um, but we need to remember that first and foremost, it starts with us, right? the team builder himself or herself. It starts with me, uh, where I improve myself. Okay, Many times we focus on improving others. Right, okay, what does what that the other person need to do? What are the things that they need to avoid doing? What are the things that need to, you know, actually doing? While first and foremost, we focus on what is it that I need to bring to the table? Right? What is it that I need to contribute? What is it that I need to stop doing? And what is it that I need to, you know, do in a greater measure? Right? It starts with me. Because if I change, then I bring change into the team. Right. If I bring, if I change, and if I add value, uh, then I can bring that value. I can add value to the team. Right. I can contribute to the team. Right. So, um, so while we know that like a team is a team is made of individuals uh, working together for a common goal, so if each individual is uh, brought to a higher level of functioning. You know, we bring that change into that every individual. Then they're able to work together and bring about then the synergy uh, that is brought about by high functioning individuals uh, results in a high functioning team with a with a great output. Okay. So, um, so let's look at some of these qualities. Okay, what are these qualities that are required of uh, a typical team player? Okay, um, so we can, so like we said, you know, so if you are recruiting, we look for these qualities, right? Or if the team is already there, then we develop these qualities uh, in the people that we have. Okay, um, so. How can I? Uh, how can I? How can I develop these qualities in the people? How can I do that? But again, the first step starts with me. First step starts with us. Right? So we uh, we have these. We make sure that we have these qualities ourselves. Okay. So so while we go through this list of qualities and we say, okay, we, I want to see this in the person. That I want to bring this, build this in the other person. Um, the most important thing is to see whether we have it ourselves and right? whether we are following it ourselves whether we have these qualities ourselves do we have, whether we have developed ourselves honed these abilities ourselves so that we can model it we can be an example and model it consistently be an example consistently right to be a consistent example of these qualities right when we modeled it when we live it out then we can also teach 
right? Uh, because um, if there is a disconnect between what we are teaching and what we are expecting uh, from the team and uh, and what we do ourselves, right? If there's a disconnect between what we model and what we teach, then it is it's a very confused message that's going out, which uh, which shows the team that this person is not actually serious. And this person is not serious about this. So much so that they don't want it in their own lives, but they are they want to see it in the lives of the team, in the functioning of the team. So uh, it's not important for them, but they're saying it's important for me. So it's a very, uh, you know, very hypocritical message that goes out. It's a two-faced thing that goes out, right? So, and it doesn't carry strength. It doesn't carry value. It's inauthentic, right? So if we model these values, if we model these qualities, and if people see it in our lives, even before they hear it from us, then the acceptance and uh, uh, and uh, uh, the the desire to want it in their own lives uh, is is there, right? Uh, so one of the things that we need we we look at you know when we look at uh, the epistles of uh, paul we see first and second timothy where he's talking about the qualities uh, of overseers of bishops you know basically people uh, who are spiritual leaders right so we see that uh, there's always an emphasis of character right we've seen it uh, over and over again there's an emphasis of of character uh, and it doesn't mean that he doesn't emphasize uh, ability right? but there is always uh, emphasis of valuing and placing character over and above ability right well um, you know what if paul does mention you know, if you look at first timothy chapter 3 he does mention uh, well this is all, all all these things that the person must be having right and you look at all those that that entire list you see that he's listing out a lot of uh things that have to do with character you know blameless temperate sober-minded good behavior hospitable so everything to do with character then he also lists down he mentions one thing you know ability able to teach able to teach um, then again, another ability, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. So there is this ability, aspect of ability also, but it's it's going together with character. And from what we see, we see that character is given a higher weightage, right? Um, because that is something that's going to take time to develop, skill can be learnt skill can be honed um, in a shorter time maybe but character is really built over a period of time and uh, no one else can do that for for that person no they have to do it themselves right okay so let's uh, let's look at some of these things uh, okay we probably will start with this and then we'll go over later okay first thing is that um, adaptable the team member has to have the quality of adaptability right so this is what um, says john c maxwell says, if if i don't change for the sake of the team then the team may change me okay what does it mean it means that if i if i don't adapt then well then that means that i have it it might come to a place where i don't have uh, a place in the team that the team may change me Right. So, what does it mean to be adaptable? Um, to to be able to evaluate strength, resources, to come up with new ideas, and to be able to change uh, quickly, change uh, and adapt oneself. Um, maybe change according to strategies and uh, change when it comes to uh, facing challenges. 
uh, with different strategies and you know finding solutions and and so on right? to be adaptable so it's the opposite of being very rigid see we need to have a stand we need to be strong and rigid when it comes to when it comes to values when it comes to um, the truth when it comes to ethics when it comes to the morals there's no compromise on that right but when we're talking about adaptability we are talking about in order to face solution or face difficulties in order to bring changes in order to bring about changes there needs to be an adaptability. It cannot be, this is how we have always done, and this is how we will continue to do. Or this is what we are comfortable with, so we, this is how we will proceed further. You know, uh, being blind to what is happening in the environment, how, you know, how quickly things are advancing, things are changing with regard to technology, with regard to, you know, uh, even the, the you know, attitude of people, mindsets of people, and so we, if we don't adapt as a team, as an organization, then we are going to be irrelevant, right? Um, so adaptability to the changing environment, to the changing challenges is very important. So since that is required of an organization, is required of a team, required of people, individuals in the team and the organization okay um okay so we'll stop here and then we'll uh, we'll look at uh, more on this uh, it's interesting as we go through this right um, on these qualities right thank you uh, we'll meet again for our next class god bless bye bye